Greetings, everyone. Once again, we thank God for this evening and also for the gift of life that God has accorded us and allowing us to be here to share his word. Allow me to pray and then we will continue with our series from where we left. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you. We glorify your name. We honor your name for your goodness. It is by thy mercy, it is by thy grace that you've allowed us to be here, Lord, to listen to your word. We pray, Lord, that all will work for the good of those who love you, and you'll allow us to listen to your word as you'll be communicating to us the gems of truth from the heavenly bakery. May your blessings be with us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Uh, we continue. And uh, yesterday, we were looking at the snares of the enemy and how we can keep ourselves from these snares that uh, the enemy has for the youth. And we talked largely of the avenues of the soul and how Satan would want to work through those avenues to be able to destroy the youths, not to be part of the final movement, having the final message to take to the sleeping world. Uh, the Christian world is asleep. The world itself is asleep. And God is looking for those who will be aroused by the message of the three angels message to take to the world both by their experience and uh, uh, by them living that truth. And so we saw how Saturn really works. And today we were to look at uh, another part, which I also believe uh, is still the working of the enemy, and that is the social life of the young. These are issues that are affecting the young, making them not to have time for what they should be doing, what should be occupying their time. And so today we are going to look at the social life of the young and how God will want it to be. Saturn indeed has made it a snare and uh, it is common today in our, in our world of today how you so easily mingle and uh, socialize with any other person in schools, in uh, uh, in the villages, everywhere. There is uh, a lot of carelessness amongst the youth that cannot really help them to be fit uh, for that which the Lord will want them to do. And that is what we will uh, we will look into today. And I want to begin by showing us that uh, it is the work of the enemy. It is the work of Satan to be able to, to do that, to show, to make the youths, to make the children who should be having the knowledge of the three angels' message, who should be being prepared to be responsible, to be taking the three angels' message to the world, is busy capturing them with uh, 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 this false associ association. So the social life of the youth. I will begin from this quote uh, in uh, Child Guidance. Child Guidance, we are picking up principles here. Yeah, we are going to read some things that we will want to draw principles from them and see exactly what we can learn from them. So we are told that uh, this is a counsel to mothers that they should shield their children, shield them as faithful mothers should from becoming contaminated by associating with every young companion. So by associating with companions, that is the principle there, we can uh, be contaminated. Keep them as precious jewels from the corrupting influence of this age. We said that we are living in the 
uh, darkest period of this world history, uh, uh, there is a lot of evil that is today. And we are told that the influence that is in this age, we should keep ourselves from. The children should keep themselves from. The youth. If you are situa uh, situated so that their intercourse with young associates cannot always be overruled, as you would wish to have it, then let them visit your children in your presence and in no case allow these associates to lodge in the same bed or even in the same room. It will be far easier to prevent, to prevent an evil than to cure it afterward. The principle that I want to draw from this quotation is that uh, by associating with evil associates or by having evil companions or those who we, we associate with who are evil, then even us will be corrupted, will be contaminated. And then it continues by saying, uh, they, parents, let them visit other young friends form their own acquaintances, and even go from their parental watch care. Some distance, some distance from home, where they are allowed to do very much as they please. Now, listen to the last portion, listen to the last portion. It says, Saturn improves all such opportunities. So when the youths are at liberty to mingle uh, with or to have associates, wherever they want, uh, without considering. When the children, the parents does not see danger of just allowing them to associate with any other uh, child or any other group, then listen, Saturn takes that advantage. Saturn improves all such opportunities and takes charge of the minds of these children whom mothers ignorantly expose to his artful snare. So one of the snares of Saturn also is associates. Whom do the youths associate with? Whom do the children who should be preparing uh, or who should be exerting an influence in the world, that is the influence of the three angels message associating with? That is the question. I am using this quotation. I'm not teach, uh, talking about marriage, but to draw principle and see how uh, important our associates are having influence over us or are impacting influence over us. So it says, many marriages can only be productive of me, uh, productive of mystery. And yet the minds of the young run in, the, in this channel because Saturn leads them there. So uh, their minds run in this channel because Saturn leads them there. Listen, making them believe that they must be married in order to be happy. When they have not the ability to control themselves or support a family, those who are not willing to adapt themselves to each other's disposition so as to avoid unpleasant dif uh, difference and contention, should not take this step. Listen to the last line. But this is one of the alluring snares of the last days. So in the last days, Saturn is in the business of channeling the minds of the youth, the minds of the children, uh, to have to be in contact, to connect themselves with those whom they should not connect themselves with. Uh, because those people, if they connect themselves with, will have a power for good to ruin their character, to, uh, to contaminate them, not to be exactly what God wants them to be. And so he says, this is the work of Satan. It is one of his alluring snares of this last day. So yes, are we living in the last days? How is Saturn working to, uh, we said the other day that Saturn is uh, doing his last campaign against the church and is doing this in various ways unknown to many. Parents and youths and children are very ignorant of these the ways that uh, Saturn is using which are planted, uh, which are painted white before them. 
Like for example, even in the church, the children are allowed, the youth are allowed to interact freely, to mingle freely uh, without caution, without uh, taking precautions and knowing exactly who and uh, uh, who are they supposed to interact with, are they, are they supposed to mingle with and make associates with? And so those, that is the work Saturn is doing to be able to uh, destroy many children and youths not to be part of uh, not to be part of the uh, team that is being formed uh, that God is forming to sound the loud cry. And listen uh, as we continue. If the minds of the youth of this age were pure and uncorrupt, the girls might have a softened influence upon the minds and manners of boys. I really appreciate this quote. Many youths in the church today feel at liberty to just easy uh, to mingle easily without taking caution with others, especially among boys and girls. But listen to this. If the minds of the youth of this age were pure and uncorrupted. So what does this mean? It means that the minds uh, of the youths of this age is not pure. Uh, uh, and the, their minds are corrupt, are corrupted. The girls might have softened influence upon the minds and manners of the boys. And the boys with their stronger farmer natures might have a tendency to ennoble and strengthen the character of God. This was the will of God. This was what was desired, that uh, boys with their farm natures, uh, they will uh, ennoble and strengthen the characters of God. Amazing, but it is a painful fact that there is not one in one girl in a hundred who is pure minded. There is no, there is no one girl out of a hundred girls in the church who are pure minded. And there is no one boy in a hundred whose morals are untainted. Many who are older have gone to such lengths in this painting that they are polluted. Soul uh, soul and body, and corruption has taken hold of large class who pass among men and women as a polite gentleman and beautiful lady. So those who we see uh, walking uh, uh, majestically into the church, these young men, we are told not even one in a hundred uh, having ca characters which are strong, are firm, uh, can be found when they are pure-minded. And so what is it that the Lord sees in this last day? He says, it is not time to recommend a beneficial, uh, it is not the time to recommend as beneficial to health, the mingling of the sexes, their being as much as possible in the society of one another. So it's not advisable. It is not advisable that a uh, young men even children, by the way, I read a quote, I didn't, don't know whether I included it here, are not allowed to uh, really uh, mingle together. Uh, the reason why, this age, there is no one in the hundred, uh, a boy whose character is firm. Their characters cannot be, uh, cannot be trusted. And so the only safety is that they should not uh, freely mingle. Even the children, they should not uh, be allowed to freely mingle with uh, different sexes, uh, even at their tender ages, because of the corrupt influence of this age. The cause of this corrupt age is the absence of true virtue and modesty. So it is because of the curse of this corrupt age that it is not safer it is not safer to uh, allow uh, boys and girls boys should not uh, enjoy the company of girls and girls as well should not enjoy the company of boys remember 
uh, these are things uh, that Saturn has painted uh, white and even the elderly are not seeing these things. And they are the ones which leads to the ruin of the youth, which leads them to uh, to seeing that they cannot be part of, uh, uh, of uh, finishing the work. They cannot be pure in mind. They cannot be firm to principle or in principle. And so uh, as much as I wanted to show us uh, how this line Saturn is also using, I would want us to see really how God would want youths of these times to have uh, their social, uh, to have their associates or to have a social life. And uh, yeah, they, that is what we we'll want to look into today. And uh, we'll come to an end. Godly associates, that is uh, very interesting. We, we want to form a group. We want to have a people around us whose their ideas, their 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 desire is that they will elevate us. We will elevate them to a standard that God wants us to reach. The standard that God wants us to reach. So godly associates. We are told we are one family. We love one another as they loved us. That is. Uh, the book uh, first uh, the book of first John we told we, we love God because he first loved us and our love for God should be uh, manifested in others. We should love one another as Christ loved us. This true friendship is different from the shallow courtesy of the world and the false show of two-faced friendship. A man that has friends must show himself friendly. That is Proverb 18, 24. This, very int this is very key and uh, very necessary for the youth of this time so that they will not be misled uh, to enter into wrong, uh, to enter into wrong uh, associates, relationships that are not, are not going to prepare them for what is soon to break upon the world. In the arrangements for the education of the chosen people, it is made manifest that life centered in God is life of completeness. Life centered in God is a life of completeness. Every want he has implanted, he provides to satisfy. Every faculty implanted, he seeks to develop. The author of all beauty, Christ is the God is the author of all beauty. Himself is a lover of beauty. God provided to gratify in his children the love of beauty. He made provision also for their social needs. You need to read again there. He made provision also for their social needs. So God did not just leave us to be uh just staying that way but we also made provisions for our social beings and you go through the bible you realize how it was important uh the kindly and helpful associates that do so much to cultivate sympathy and to brighten and to sweeten life so kind associate helpful associates that is God, that is God's provision that we will have kind associates, helpful associates that do so much to cultivate sympathy and to brighten and sweeten life. Yeah, so God did not intend that when we are here upon the earth as youths, we will be gloomy, just staying alone and uh, doing all these things. He also provided for us uh, the aspect of socializing. And he says that it was to uh, brighten and sweeten our lives. Uh, that was the book of Education 41. We are told in Testimony to the Church, Volume 6, 172, that Christian sociability is altogether too little cultivated by God's people. 
Yeah, and more especially, uh, those who call themselves present truth, uh, there has come to a point that man does not see the need of having the social life. Uh, acquainting themselves with others, forming friendships, uh, because Satan has altered that. But Satan altering that doesn't mean that uh, God's people do not should not cultivate sociability. So it says Christian sociability is altogether too little cultivated by God's people. So what does this mean? God's people should uh, should cultivate social life and especially we are talking about with youths uh, and children they should be allowed to socialize by social intercourse acquaintances are formed and friendship contracted which result in unity of heart an atmosphere of love which is pleasing in the sight of heaven amen so these associates this friendship these acquaintances that we make uh, should, uh, should be pleasing in the sight of heaven. That's very nice. We are not going to form associates who are not going to strengthen us uh, to draw us closer to Jesus, uh, to make heaven happy. Uh, it continues, everyone will find companions or make them. And just in proportion to the strength of friendship will be amount of influence which friends will exert over one another for good or for evil. So uh, the, our associates will influence us either for good or for evil. But I pray that our influence towards our associates will be for good. And that is why we are speaking about practical religion, which is not seen among us the professed Christian world of today, among us the youth. If you will have a practical godliness, uh, then the influence that we will ha be having to our fellow youths, friends, even relatives, because there are a lot of uh, places that we will find ourselves, even with our relatives, our youths, other youths who are relatives, but they are non-believers, what influence will we exact to them? If we are having a practical religion, a practical godliness as youths and children, uh, then the influence that we we'll exact upon them will be for good. All will have associates. So it says that all will have associates and all will influence and be influenced in their turn. The link is a myst uh, the link is mysterious, one which binds human hearts together so that the feeling states, the principles of two individuals are closely blended. One catches the spirit and copies the way and acts of the other. As wax retains the figure of the seal, so the mind retains the impression, uh, the impression produced by intercourse and association. So we can see how powerful uh, the intercourses and the associ associates that we have can influence us either for good or for evil. The influence may be unconscious. We cannot really understand, yet it is not less powerful. It is powerful. If choices is made of companions who fear the Lord, the influence will lead to the truth, to duty, and to holiness. Take some principles that will really tell whether the associates you are having are making the heavens happy, uh, the angels happy. We are told if we choose God-fearing uh, companions or friends, then the influence will lead to truth. We will be talking about truth we will be uh, conversing about Jesus and any other thing revolving around the truth. We will not neglect duty and uh, holiness. And uh, this is seen among us to many youths of this time. Uh, they are on their phones every time they have neglected duty, professing to be having companions, 
uh, talking to their friends, engaging with their friends. So if our friendships will lead us to neglect duty, our love for others will lead us to uh, neglect duty and responsibilities and lead us not to have even the love of truth, then we have to question. A truly Christian life is a power for God. Uh, that is so powerful. We are told the warmth of a true friendship is a protest of the joys of heaven. The warmth of a true friendship is a protest of the joys of heaven. So if we, if the youths today will have associates, true friends, uh, then it will be a protest of joy of heaven so it means that god really wants the youth to have associates uh, he wants the uh the children to be associated with others to win the uh to have influence for good upon them to also for also them uh not to be contaminated to receive uh evil impact from other associates that they engage with. So this is the work of Saturn uh, to be able to allow you to allow even the elderly to engage into associates, uh, have a social life that seems to appear to bring them happiness, but doesn't really uh, prepare them for the life to come. We're looking forward to have a life here and enjoy the life here, but doesn't really end there. Also have a life uh, to come, and that is eternal life. Uh, under uh, uh, comp uh, companions and making friendships and uh, godly friends, we, 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 we are told that we should have, we should not have partiality. We should not have partiality. And these are some of the principles that makes the youth to understand really whether the associates they are having, are they making heavens rejoice or it's a snare? It's either true. It's either a snare or it's that which God ordains and allows for the glory and honor of God. Ointment and perfume rejoice the heart. That is Proverbs 27, verses 9. Uh, so do the sweetest of a man's friend by heart, hearty cancer. That is Proverbs 27, 9. We should, we should have the love of Christ in the heart to such a degree that our interest in others will be impartial and sincere. So uh, we should have the love of Christ in the heart uh, to such a degree that our interest in others, our interest in others, maybe our friends, will be impartial and sincere. Our affection should take a wide range and not center simply upon few. Our affections should not be uh, centered upon few who flatter us by special confidences. So amongst this age, there is a lot of uh, uh, jokes and a lot of flatteries amongst the youth, amongst the youth especially. And uh, the tendency of such friendship is to lead us to neglect those who are great in greater need of love than those who, upon whom we bestow our attention. So. There are people who flatter us a lot. Uh, we flatter them. There is this uh, relationship that is based on flattery and uh, leading people to be impartial and sincere. And we'll be able to understand uh, because these are things that practical things that happens in our days. Uh, we should not narrow our circle of friends to a few favorites because they pet and flatter us by their professed affection. The partial attention so often bestowed and received works not for the highest good of those who will serve God. 
One draws upon the other for strength. So this does not work for those who will want to serve God. We will want to have uh, uh, relationships or friends who uh, we will not be uh, partial. We will treat everyone the same way. And it says we should not narrow our circle of friends to a few favorites because they pet and flatter us by their professed affection. And this is what has injured many youths. Uh, the partial attention so often bestowed and received works not for the highest good of those who will serve God. One draws upon the other for strength and praise, flattery, and affection one receives of the other supplies the place that should be supplied by the grace of God. And thus, human friends take their affections from Christ. Human friends should not take their affections from Christ. Our Remember yesterday we read a verse that set your affections on things on high, uh, on the uh, things above. And so uh, we are looking unto Jesus who sits at the right hand of, the, of God and... Uh, that is where all our affections, our strength, everything we should consecrate. And so our human friends should not take that. And we say it's human confidence, human associates absorb the love and trust that should be given to God alone. That is a, a very common in the youth today who are so infatuated uh, by Others, the few, they the few favorites, uh, and that leads them to treat others partially, not to treat uh, other 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 others uh, this equally. Just as Christ had the twelve disciples and he treated them equally, instead of seeking to become a favorite yourself or to flatter one who may be highly regarded, see if there is not poor child. This, is, this was very interesting to me. Instead of looking to have your favorite friends and uh, flatter yourself around with them and uh, do all these things, we are told that instead of that, we should look for a poor child who is not a favorite, to whom no special kindness has shown, and make this one the object of your unselfish attention. Those who are especially, attract, uh, especially attractive will be at no loss for friends. While those who are less pleasing in appearance, who are timid and hard to become acquainted with, may have choice traits of character, and they are the purchase of the blood of Christ. That is Youth Instructor, uh, May 25th, 1893. Uh, we, are, we are considering not being partial. We are forming associates where our main aim uh, is to our main aim is to uh, uh, strengthen each other, elevate each other, and be able to uh, and be able to be part of this group that is going to finish the work of God. If that is the mind that the youths will have, then they will not they will not have favorite friends whom they will cherish too much, they will uh, engage too much uh, and uh, uh, be able to not do that which God will want them to do. Feeling of unrest and homesickness of loneliness may be for your good. Yeah, some people say I'm bored, uh, I'm alone, so I need friends who I can loiter around with and whom we can enjoy life with. Feelings of unrest and homesickness or loneliness may be for your good. Your Heavenly Father means to teach you to find in Him the friendship and love and consolation that will satisfy your most earnest hopes and desires. So the friendship that we can we find in Christ um, is can be enough. Your only safety and happiness are in making Christ you are constant counselor. You can be happy in him if you had no other friend in the world, in the world while. So if you have Christ as your best friend, uh, then you will be 
uh, you will be good to go. And we are not saying that we should not form associates, we should not form friends. Remember the quotation in uh, testimony to the church, we are having a balance. If today I will not find an associate who, uh, I, I will not find an associate who will uh, have an influence over me for good, I'd rather stay with Jesus as my best friend and I'll be still happy. Uh, that is that makes sense but whenever possible if we in are in a position to we can form associates we can form we can have friends that our main aim is to finish the work of god is to draw others to uh to the to christ is to draw others to christ and even us strengthen ourselves uh to christ Choosing friends, choosing friends. This is some something that uh, is really uh, an issue among us, the youths. How do they choose friends? The Bible is pretty clear about this. How should the youths choose their friends? How should the youths choose their friends and form these associates, which makes the heavens rejoice? We are told one of the most important choices will well over make is our friends. So if you ever think of having a friend, then this is an important choice. Most of the times we don't set our, out to make friends. Often friendships simply develop naturally as we spend time with people who enjoy some of the same things we do. This is true. If we have people who are, are, we are having the same mind with, we, I love doing medical missionary work. They love doing medical missionary work and all these things uh, that are godly, then we can we 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 tend to be friends. And then 2 Timothy 2:2 2, 2 says, flee also youthful lust, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace. Listen, follow righteousness. So whatever we are following. In the youths, uh, in in the associates that we desire to make, that we desire to have, it's righteousness. If we cannot find righteousness in the associates that we make, then we better uh quit. Faith, charity, that is love, peace. If we have associates, if we have friends that we cannot have peace, we cannot be peaceful. We cannot learn how to. Uh, be at peace, then that is a red light. And then listen to the last line, with them that call on the, the, the Lord out of pure heart. So we are making associates uh, with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. That is Second uh, Timothy 2.22. 2, 2 those who call on the Lord with a pure heart, those who are closer to Christ, those who are friends of Christ. Uh, that is uh, quite interesting. When we are forming friends and uh, uh, forming associates, remember, don't forget that the reason why we are looking into this is because Satan has made this a snare by allowing you uh, to freely, without considering whom they, who do they actually associate with. And so it's quite interesting. A, a man that had friends must show himself friendly. So if we decide to have friends, we also have to be friendly. And there is a friend that sticketh closer as a brother. Uh, Proverbs 22, uh, we are handling making friendship. Proverbs 22, uh, verses 24, it says, make no friendship with an angry man. We are Picking principles, so it says, make no friendship with an angry man and with a furious man, thou shalt not go. So make no friendship with an angry man and with a furious man, thou shalt not go. So if you do not desire to move on, make a friendship with an angry man. Uh, verses 25, lest thou learn his ways. So if you make friendships with angry man, uh, with a furious man, then you will learn his ways. If the children are allowed 
to easily interact and mingle and associate themselves with uh, uh, ungodly children who has not been trained in the ways of God, then they will learn their ways and get snare to thy soul. So our soul will be snared and we are, we are here to keep our souls. Remember we were told yesterday that keep your heart with all diligence for out of it cometh the issues of life. We should keep our soul and to uh, preserve our soul uh, for, for God. And so if we do not consider the friendships that we enter into, we are told that it, it will be a snare to our soul. Another uh, verse that really it's interesting is 1 Corinthians 15.33. 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Be not deceived. Evil communication corrupt good manners. So amongst the youth in this age who are not pure-minded, whose characters are not tainted, uh, there is a lot of jesting, cheap talks, uh, a lot of uh, stripling, and all this. And this, if we youths who desire to be do the work of God, who desire to be God's children, uh, interact and freely associate and be friends of such, then they will corrupt our good manners. Uh, because of these conversations that, and remember we talked yesterday about the power of uh, listening, the ear, what we listen. So if we uh, continually get to listen to these uh, jokes and uh, a lot of laughter which doesn't really bring glory to the name of God, then our good manners will be corrupted. That is Corinthians 15.33 first. Second Corinthians 6.14 says that be not equally yoked together with unbelievers. So we can be believers, but if we are equally yoked uh, together with unbelievers, uh, then what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? There is no fellowship between righteousness and righteousness. So if we are equally yoked together with uh, unbelievers, it's so dangerous. And what communion hath light with darkness? So God has given us light. And we will want this light to penetrate darkness. And we cannot, uh, there is no communion between light and darkness. So the youth must learn these principles. They must accept to, uh, they must uh, live as we see. Second Corinthians 6, 17. I want to be very quick because it seems that it wants to rain and it might interfere with that. It's actually, a, it has begun raining. Uh, Second Corinthians 6, 17. Wherefore, come, come out among them. Come out among these evil associates and be ye separate, says the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. So God will receive us. He desires that we will not detach ourselves. We will detach ourselves from our evil associates because this Satan has brought to be a snare for the youth not to do the work of God, uh, to occupy their time not to have time to study the word of God as it should be, not to have time to meditate upon them as it should be. Time is golden, dear youth. These messages to young people, 164 paragraph three. We are told time is golden, and these are uh, actually, time is golden, dear youth. You must not imperil your soul by sowing wild oats. You cannot afford to be careless in regard to companions you choose. Youths who are going to finish the work, who are going to be part of those who are uh, going to sound the loud cry, they cannot be careless uh, in choosing in regard to companions they choose. Dwell upon that which is noble in the characters of others, and their traits will become to you a moral power in resisting the evil and choosing the good. Set your mark high. Set your mark high. Your parents and teachers who love and fear God may follow you with their prayers and day, prayers day and night. They entreat and warn you. But all this, 
So uh, our parents can be praying for us uh, and uh, our teachers can be leading us and telling us all these things, evil company, corrupt good morals, all these things. But all this will be in vain if we choose recklessly, carelessly, our associate. If you see no real danger and think you can do right as well as wrong, just as you choose, you will not discern the living of the wickedness in uh, insidiously tainting and corrupting your mind. So you might be having a pure mind, but choosing carelessly, your associates, your mind will be corrupted. Your character will start to be contaminated. And uh, that is what we want to present to God. We want to present to Christ character, untainted character. Uh, listen to this. Very interesting. We have to be connected to Christ. All our associations should lead us to be connected with Christ. And having our associates, we have to have a, an experience with Christ. There is nothing in us of ourselves by which we can influence others. So we've seen that we should influence others for good. But listen, there is nothing in us that we can influence others with. So what are we going to influence others with? The life of Christ. So if the, for us to have right uh, friends, for us to have right uh, companions, we first have to be influenced by Christ. We have to live the life of Christ so that we will impact that life to other, others who will be forming our friends. Uh, if we realize our helplessness and need of divine power, we shall not trust to ourselves. So there is nothing good that we can impart to others, but we can impart to others the life of Christ living in us uh, when Christ dwells in us. When unconsciously we are in danger of exacting our own influence, the angels will be by our side, prompting us to a better cause, choosing our words for us and influencing our actions. Two things. So we influence others by our, our words and our actions. And these can be led well by God, by Christ. Christ dwelling in us, the hope of glory. That is when we can exact an influence that it will be a power for good to others that we will associate with. And them as well should be connected to Christ. So guess that connection will be able to uh, uh, bring up a, a, a group that uh, is uh, really encouraging one other, another to and strengthening one another. Thus, our influence may be silent, unconscious, but mighty power in drawing others to Christ and the heavenly word. So if Christ dwells in us, if we live the life of Christ, then our influence, even by silence, unconsciously, uh, will have a power in drawing others to Christ, those who are associated with us. Personal influence are power. It is, uh, personal influence is power, is a power. It is to work with influence of Christ, to lift where Christ lived, to impart correct principle, to stay the progress of the world's corruption, it is to diffuse what gra uh, that grace which Christ alone can impart. It is to uplift, to sweeten the lives and character of others by the pure, uh, by the power of the pure example, united in honest faith and love. God's amazing grace. So it is to work with influence of Christ. So our influence should work with the influence of Christ. So that means Christ has to have an influence first in us. We must be impressed with his life, the life that he lived as a youth, the life that he lived as a child, so that we will exact that influence to others. As a rule, those who choose for their friends and companions, persons who reject Christ and stumble upon God's law, eventually, becoming of the same mind and spirit. So if today we will trust in our powers and say that uh, we can choose for companion and friends, persons who reject Christ and stumble upon God's law, 
then we are very sure we will have the same spirit. We will uh, reject Christ and we will stumble upon the law of, Christ, the law of God and should manifest towards them a spirit of kindness and courtesy. But we can safely choose for our friends only those who are friends of God. Amen? Yeah, this is so interesting that we choose for our self friends who are friends of God. We are not going to choose wildlings as our friends. We read the story of Jonathan. Jonathan, by birth, heir to the throne, yet knowing himself set aside by the divine degree. To his river, uh, ri river, ri rival, the most tender and faithful of friends, shielding David's life at periods of its own, steadfast and its father's size through the dark days of his declining power, and at his side, falling at the uh, falling at the last, the name of Jonathan is treasured in heaven. The, gen the name of Jonathan is treasured in heaven. We are given a good friend, the friendship between Jonathan and David. And it starts on the earth witness to the existence of the power of unselfish love. Things will Things will go wrong with everyone. Sadness and discouragement press every soul. When a person, always a, when a personal presence, a friend who will comfort and impart strength, will turn back the darts of the enemy that they are uh, that are armed to destroy. So we we saw that the enemy is armed to destroy, but God desires that uh, we will have associate who will comfort who will impart strength, who will uplift us to be able to uh, go against the odds of the enemy. Christian friends are not half as plentiful as they should be. In hours of temptation, in crisis, what a value is a true friend. Satan has such time sends along his agents to cause the trembling limbs to stumble. But the true friends who will cancel who will impart magnetic hopefulness, the, uh, the calming faith that uplifts the soul. All such help is worth more than precious parts. A strong, helpful grasp of the hand of a true friend is worth more than gold and silver. A strong, helpful grasp of the hand of a true friend is worth more than gold and silver. Yeah, so like Saul and uh, like uh, like uh, we see Jonathan and David, their friendship, it was to strengthen each other. It was to help each other in times of trials. And that is what God really wants. That in these times that Satan uh, is working tirelessly to destroy the lives of the youth, to destroy the lives of the children. We will have associates that will help us, will help us to pray more, to uh, interest us more to the word of God and uplift us. Uh, friends for uplifting of each other to draw closer to Christ. The purpose for having friends, it's not to hang around as many you think, as uh, many desire to hang around, and do all these things. It is to uplift each other, to draw closer to Christ. Things will go wrong with everyone. Sadness and discouragement press every soul. Then a personal presence, a friend who will comfort and impart strength, will turn back the darts of the enemy that are armed to destroy. Yeah, this is we've seen in uh, SDA uh, Bible commentary that uh, a true friend will impact strength in times of difficulty. They will uplift. The life of Samuel from early childhood has been a life of piety and devotion. We are given the example of Samuel and uh, Eli, how their friendship, their, uh, their friendship was uh, for uplifting each other. Uh, it says, the life of Samuel from early childhood has been a life of piety and devotion. He had been placed under the care of Eli in his youth. 
and the loveliness of his character drew forth the warm affection of the aged priest. So uh, Samuel had a lovely character that drew the affection of the aged priest, that is priest early. He was kind, generous, diligent, obedient, and respectful. It was a singular thing that uh, singular thing that between Eli, the chief magistrate of the nation, and the simple child, so warm a friendship should exist. So there was a friendship between uh, Samuel and uh, Eli, who was the who was the eldest, uh, who was the priest actually, and we are told what draw drew early to have uh, 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 to be friend to Samuel was the lovely character of uh, Samuel and he, he wished to have encouraged him. It was uh, uh, it continues, Samuel was helpful and affectionate and no father ever loved his child more tenderly than did early to this youth that is uh, that is to Samuel. How touching to see youth and old age rarely one upon another. So uh, in this age, youths are only interested to have associates with other youths. But here we find that we find that we can uh, even have friends, elderly people who are godly people because they are able to guide us in the right way. They are able to lead us in the right path, especially when they are friends of God. How touching to see youth and old age rely one upon the other. So you see uh, the lovely character of, uh, of, uh, of Samuel was of benefit to, uh, to Eli because he was obedient. I am very sure that he would do anything to help Eli whenever Eli would want because of it is old age. And it says that how touching to see youth and old age relying one upon the other. The youth looking up to the age for counsel and wisdom. The age looking to the youth for help and sympathy. Wow. This is as it should be. God would have the young possess such qualification of character that they shall find delight in the friendship of old. So it's not just uh, telling us to uh, form associates and just uh, forming associates with fellow youths, no. We can form even associates. We can have friendship, those of elder uh, of elderly age who will impact wisdom and write counsels to us, uh, to uplift us, to draw us closer to Christ uh, as never before. And we also can be helping hand to the elder. Remember when we were handling a call for the youths, when we were handling a call for the youth, uh, we realized that uh, great men who have stood as standard bearers uh, are going down. They are getting old and there should be, their places should be taken by a uh, strong energet energetic young man. So this is the time that young men should be at liberty to make friends with these old men, uh, with these uh, experienced men who uh, will give wise counsels and will give will will give wisdom to them, so that they will go by their strength to continue with the work. This is. Uh, this is as it should be. God will have the young possess such qualification of character that they should find delight in the friendship of the old, that they may be united in the uh, uh, enduring bonds of affection to those who are approaching the borders of the grave. Wow. A strong, helpful grasp of the, uh, of the hand of a true friend is worth more gold and silver. May God really help our youth, help me individually, uh, help even the elderly to be able to form associates with the young, to counsel them, to give them wisdom, to draw them closer to Jesus Christ, and uh, so that we will not fall in the trap, in the snares of the enemy to ruin the youth and the children through these evil associates 
uh, that do not impact influence that will be for good, but rather influence which is evil. May God bless you. Uh, shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you. We glorify your name for your goodness. Uh, Satan is not at rest. He is working by all means to deceive and to keep in darkness your children. In this age, he is using what people love most, and that is to have associates to ruin the children, the youths, and even the elderly. We pray, Lord, that you will help the youths of this time who desire to be uh, your children and consecrate their lives to you, to find joy in having right companions and friends. May your blessings be with us. Continue leading us. Thank you for allowing me to have this meeting with your children. Bless those who have, have followed. Bless those who will be following later. And may your name be glorified. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.